vibes have been too positive recently. It's time to argue a little bit. We haven't done a tier list in a little bit. I know you're going to say that it's a little scuffed. Your screen region's a little scuffed. Well, you're right about the camera. So the camera should come down just a little, just a little bit, like right there. Um, but I have cropped out the advertisements for you. I have become your ad block. You don't want to see the ads. I'll just tell you what it is. I don't even know. Like one of the ads is just a, a numbered list, okay? And it says, create your own game, make your own character, create a chart, custom Fortnite skins, make a character. How stupid do you have to be to be interested by that advertiser? That ad doesn't even make any sense. Custom Fortnite skins? And then the other ad is Tech Savvy Winterfest Deals. Save up to $379 on family-sized internet. If you're interested in that, let me know. I can I can give you the link and give you some more information. But for now, I thought, why don't we do a standard drink tier list? Now, I looked for a long time to find a, a, a group of drinks that I felt were like somewhat representative. This is only maybe like 35 drinks. That's not as many as I would like. Um, I also noticed there, there were some regional differences, like on some... Uh, Lists, you would go and there would just... Well, some of them had like four things. One of them had a, a bucket of KFC fried chicken on it. And I just imagine there's people with too much time on their hands, which, uh, you know, they're, they're like, wouldn't it be funny if I made a drink tier list and put food on it or something like that? But a lot of them were also, they would have like Coke, but no Pepsi, but then nine brands of Yerba Mate. And I'm like, this must be a regional difference thing. Um... But this one seems reasonably representative, uh, representative, I should say. I will say, here's, here's how I'm going to edit my tier list today, okay? S is going to be drink it daily, or, you know what? Let's put it this way, would drink daily, because otherwise that's literally just like a water tier. Then, would keep in fridge... like something I would buy at the grocery store and then keep it stocked in the fridge, then B tier, maybe at a restaurant. C tier, maybe at a potluck. D tier, all stick with water, thanks. And then final tier, have not tried it. I think that makes sense. These seem like good tier lists to me. <laughs> Gas station tier. What's a potluck? A potluck is, you know what, maybe at a children's softball game. How about that? That's like, you know, at the children's softball game, all the parents, they go in on like one of those orange plastic tubs. And then when you push the spout, like a little orange liquid comes out that's not quite juice. It's not quite soda. It's not quite Gatorade. It's just like orange. It's like McDonald's orange drink. That's Tang. I, honestly, you learn something new every day. Yeah, it's kind of like Sunny D, okay? What's softball? Um, it's kind of like softball is to baseball as lacrosse is to hockey. Does this Look, you, let's not get mired in the minutia, okay? Let's start with a Monster Energy drink. I said we were going to argue. Let's argue. Um, I don't drink energy drinks. I have had a few in my life. Of the, the Monster Red Bull continuum, I prefer to have a, a Red Bull. But even then, let, just here's my thinking. I drink coffee. I'm not saying I'm above caffeine, okay? I drink coffee, though, on a daily basis. I... The, the branding of a monster doesn't speak to me. The taste I find a little sickly. The ingredient list scares the crap out of me. I'll stick with water, thanks. Now, that's just, I, I think that's one that's not going to make people happy, but you have to acknowledge that this is my tier list, okay? Plus twos? I'm surprised. I'm gonna, by the way, Red Bull's going to be in the same tier, so if you're like, oh, thank God, all those monster fanboys are getting owned... But 
my Red Bull is going to be safe. You are incorrect for the record. But anyway, bottoms up and the devil laughs. Yeah, it may also open a portal to Beelzebub, according to that lady. It's got the number of the beast on it, bottoms up and the devil laughs. Um, almond milk. Nobody out there drinks a glass of almond milk, right? Like, this is not something that happens. You don't go to the grocery store, buy almond milk, pour uh, just a tall glass of it. You don't go to... I mean, if you went to a restaurant and you said, can I get a glass of almond milk? I would be surprised. This is like an ingredient or a base. Ban everyone who says they do. It's more of a base or an, or a, an additive. Have you ever heard of a MILF? Bro, they're making smoothies. They're not just drinking almond milk. They got like seven different kinds of, you know, silk and oatly in the fridge because they're making smoothies. Maybe some cereal as well. But I'll be honest, this one, is, it's kind of exposed a flaw in my uh, tear system because, uh, I mean, I don't really drink it as a, th as a drink, but I do keep it stocked in the fridge. It's just nice to have some kind of milk alternative around on a regular basis. You know, you would use it as a, as a little additive to something else. I keep it in the fridge. It also, like, it lasts forever. Now, maybe that's not true. I should check the best before date. But, like, it lasts, uh, you know, longer than regular milk for sure. Do you use it every day? No, absolutely not. There have been times, but but not recently. Pepsi. Um, this is, uh, to be honest, I've long been a believer that uh, you can't really tell the difference between Pepsi and Coke unless you drink way too much of both of them, or either of them, I suppose. Um, I see now that there is a Diet Coke on the list. I would... At a, at a restaurant, I would order a Diet Coke from time to time. With a DoorDash order, I would add a Diet Coke. Um, a, a regular Coke, a regular Pepsi. I'm not saying they don't taste kind of good. But honestly, I'll stick with water, thanks. I would, I would if you gave me the choice, in, in, unless I was hungry... I would take a water over a Pepsi any day of the week. And I'm not a health nut. Like, there's things on this list that have calories that I would take over water any day of the week. But I would, I would rather have water than, than Pepsi 100% of the time, unless I'm hungry. Either way, by the way, I mean, this is just... Water is like your free space. Would drink daily. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. <laughs> Oh, uh, because other, I mean, you, everything that you drink essentially has some water in it, unless you're uh, about to die. Um, so I think that this is a gimme, but yeah, dude, water's, a, what, what's wrong? Here's the thing. It's, it, it hits all the right spots, man. It's extremely cheap if it comes out of your tap. And I say that as someone who pays the water bill, it is good for you. Like it's, I mean... I get, you could say it's neutral for you, but in today's world, things that are neutral for you are good for you. It is calorie-less, it's refreshing, it's delicious, it's exactly what your body wants on any given basis. Like, it's what, what else can you say? It allows you to survive? Yeah, that gives it a pretty good competitive advantage. It's literally required to live. That's true. That's pretty true. I will, and probably some people are going to relate to this, but I remember even as early, I think this was like sixth grade, there was a girl in my class who was like, I never drink water. I don't like the taste. Even as an 11 or 12 year old, I was like, the rest of your life is going to be fucked up. You got to get over that. You lit, like, do you know what a, a, a drag that is going to be on your overall physical health to never drink water and only drink juice, soda, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, you're you're probably talking about like a minimum, like five hundred calorie per day extra just as a result of not drinking water. Not to mention, I don't even want to talk about, like, kidneys. She was not drinking tea, okay? She was drinking brisk, baby. 
This was before water enhancers existed. There was no crystal light back then. This was like 99. You got you to gotta drink some real water, okay? It, it's, it's helpful. I would recommend it. It's the best. Also, what do you mean you don't like the taste? It's just, it's taste. It, like, it's, it's nothing. It just is neutral. And oh my God, when you're thirsty and you get that big, that first big gulp of water. Oh man. Anyway. Chamomile tea. Um, I, uh, it, it, there's also just tea. There's, is there, there's an iced tea. Okay. And the green tea. Um, I, just being honest with you, I've been a little bit of a tea sicko lately. I've been drinking some more tea. I don't really like the floral teas that much. I don't like an herby tea as much as I like, you know, a green tea. I like an Earl Grey. I, I like an iced tea and stuff like that. But I think personally, I would put this not as just I'll stick with water. If you gave me the option, I would have it at a children's softball game. I don't know if I would never order it at a restaurant because I'm not a 75 year old person. <laughs> but if if they were coming around at a softball game with a with a sleepy time tea and a and a bottle of Dasani, I would probably take the chamomile tea. Look, they, you got to remember this is an abstraction, okay? All of these are abstractions to represent a frequency or desirability of consumption. Pineapple soda. I have kind of a hot take on on so uh, like fruit flavored sodas. I think that the more exotic the soda, the worse it actually tastes overall. Like an orange soda, pretty tasty. A Sprite, pretty tasty. Other lemon-lime sodas, pretty tasty. Once you start to get into like, you know, ooh, they have a passion fruit soda, it's, gonna, it's not going to taste as good as the can looks, is my, is my take. Um... I, a lot of these sodas, I like, I, this is not a good take, okay? But this is my personal take. Justin, I don't know if you're going to be with me on this one. Jo I think Josh is my kindred spirit. I understand that a diet soda is not necessarily good for you in a, an objective reading of the ingredients list. But at least it's zero calories or like under 10 calories. I don't want to drink like a normal soda at least i don't want to drink a fanta i might drink like some kind of glass bottled hipster soda that's like uh you know four dollars a bottle but is made with real chicory or something like that but or yeah like a yarito i'll, I'll take some yaritos but otherwise like if you're gonna offer me like a 200 calorie soda why don't you just give me like a beer at least it does something for me. At least it has some kind of like psychological impact. But I'm not going to sit there and just drink a can of Pepsi for recreation like a nine-year-old kid. I'm an adult. I'm not going to spend 200 calories of the calorie budget for something that, you know, doesn't give me some, at least a momentary happy chemicals. And if you got a Diet Coke, I'll take that. Otherwise, can I... Maybe get like a Newcastle Brown Ale or something. I mean, it is a children's softball game. I don't expect them to have like a great selection necessarily of, of fine lagers and ales. But anyway, that's so this is my reasoning for like why the the sodas that are not diet are going to be low. Like if you gave me the option between a pineapple soda or a water, I would take a, a water without a doubt. I would also probably take it over a chamomile tea, but let's not worry about that too much. I I'm just going to be honest. Apple soda is in the haven't tried it tier. I've never heard of it in my life. It, I'm sure it exists because there's a photo of it, but I've never seen it. Chocolate milk? I, I, I realize like, I have very strong opinions on, on drinks, but mostly it's just because I think I'm, I'm a, the water respecter has logged on. I have to compare everything to water. It's got to offer me something that water doesn't. Now, I, chocolate milk has a lot working against it for me, okay? I don't really like the flavor of chocolate. I don't have much of a sweet tooth. I find bovine milk to be a, a bit of a strange concept that is 
only considered normal because of the fact that a lot of people do it and have done it for like thousands of years. But when you think about it, you know, from a, a higher order, like a bird's eye view, this shit is kind of weird. Um, and also, I think you guys are all in the pocket of the milk industry, who has you thinking that if you don't drink two glasses of milk a day, you're going to end up with broken bones, even though you live a largely sedentary lifestyle. Chocolate milk, without a doubt, even as a child, and this will ring true, I'm sure, because you know me, at least you know what I tell you on Twitch. Uh, I've been old since I was young. Even as a kid, I preferred the regular milk over the chocolate milk. I'm not even talking about banana milk, strawberry. I was always just like, give me the normal milk. Save the chocolate for the, the people who want it. I, I would stick with water, thanks. Now, apple cider. Now we're talking. Apple cider, it's kind of the, the patrician's apple juice. Plus two or minus two on that. So true. If I went to somebody's house and they offered me an apple juice, I would be like, okay, you probably got kids. If they offered me an apple cider, I'd be like, oh shit, you guys just come back from the farmer's market? <laughs> I understand that it's just like apple cider is just unfiltered apple juice, but there's something about it that just hits a little different, man. It kind of tastes, it tastes like the autumn. It tastes autumnal. Need to go back in VOD to see the Pepsi treason. It's the same as the Snyder's treason. It has calories that I don't respect. I will respect the calories if, if something tastes amazing. Well, the Snyder's taste amazing, but like the numbers are so bad, man. It's like crazy. Anyway, apple cider. Look, I wouldn't keep it in the fridge, probably, but I would definitely get it at a restaurant. If I was at like a sugar shack or something... And they were like, hey, with your maple candy, you can get an apple cider or a water. I would be like, oh, man, it's been a while since I had some apple cider. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all in on that. Hot or cold, I would take it either way. Grape juice, honestly, has got to be amongst the worst fruit juices that are out there. We, it's funny because we've talked about grape juice regularly. Um, cause I feel like, I don't know if it, cause I was a kid in the nineties, right. And the early two thousands. So I don't know if grape juice has faded from my awareness because I'm older now and only kids drink grape juice, or if it had a moment in the nineties and the two thousands and now nobody really drinks it. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but I will say, I don't think that grape juice is very good at all. Like, the, the juices that graduate out of adolescence and are available at, like, you know, a hotel continental breakfast fountain, you get apple, you get orange. Cranberry usually would be a number three. Depending on the place, you might end up getting a, a grapefruit. Grape juice, though, is it's perpetually stuck in, like, a 10 year old's birthday party like that that's the culture that grape juice thrives in to its best potential i also think that uh i od'd on welch's white grape juice when i was between the ages of like six and 12 and i never want to see it again i it like i probably drank like four glasses of it a day and i that was enough for one lifetime, honestly. So I, I would definitely rather stick with water than have grape juice. I also feel like, is this the worst juice for you? Like, it's literally just... Like, sugar, right? I guess they're all kind of just sugar. But not all juices also, like, dye your teeth purple. Anyway, dark coffee. I mean, I would drink it daily. I can't even... I can't mess around on that one. That's a gimme. I can be judged for this. It's probably the second most frequently consumed beverage via me. For me. I don't know why I said via. Can somebody tell me what the hell Kalita Soda is? <laughs> what is, is... What's Kalita? That's a blood orange. I've had a blood orange uh, San Pellegrino.
I'm going to put this in haven't tried it. I don't think I can realistically uh, answer this question. Uh, energy drink. Okay, now this, I, I actually, when I was thinking about what to play in the shower today, these are not energy drinks. These are Gatorade. Let's, let's also lump Powerade in here. Because, I mean, you got Red Bull, you got Monster Energy drinks. We're going to treat this as, as what it actually is, which is an electrolyte replenishing beverage. I think people, and this is judgmental, I think people drink way too much of this. Like, if you ever go to Costco, you will see people that... You know, I mean, this is insanely rude, but they like they don't look like they're doing 64 workouts a month and they're coming out with like pallets of Gatorade. And you're like, I don't think you need that much. This is a value judgment. I don't think you need that much Gatorade personally, but I'll tell you when not so much the the Peloton, but when I was running Oh my God, will you finish like a, a reasonably long run every once in a while? It would end close to a 7-Eleven. I would feel like a, a call, like a siren inside that 7-Eleven to go in and get a Gatorade. And then you could drink like a liter in the parking lot and it feels so damn good. It actually is like, it, it feels like you're a balloon being like reinflated. Most, of, I think that when people habitually consume Gatorade, it's not for the electrolytes, it's probably more for the sugar. But if you've been sweating a lot, if you've been doing a lot of yard work or something like that, and then you get, you get the choice between a water and a Gatorade, the Gatorade will hit different. If you've been working, that Gatorade is going to hit different. Um, that being said, I don't keep it stocked. I, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in the maybe at a restaurant tier, which I would never order Gatorade at a restaurant. That's psychotic. But this is more like maybe, you know, outside of the house. I don't need to keep Gatorade stocked because I need it once every three months. But I would actively go out and get some Gatorade from the store if I felt like I, I wanted it. Table for two at 7-Eleven. So true. Protein shake, um, you know, this. The, I, I haven't had a protein shake since I stopped lifting weights in March 2020. But, I mean, I would keep it in the fridge. It, you, I'm a very utilitarian sort of guy, okay? Every drink that I, everything I buy at the grocery store, every drink that I purchase and, and keep in my home, it has a, a purpose. Water is just the baseline. Dark coffee gets me going in the morning. You're an ingredient in a protein shake. You are uh, an easy way to get, you know, like 30 plus grams of protein down your gullet in less than five minutes at 7 a.m. Everything serves a purpose. Does a protein shake taste better than a Pepsi? Only someone that's so delusional that they are willing to go to the gym for 90 minutes every single day for 365 days straight would lie to you and tell you that. A Pepsi obviously tastes better, but the protein shake actually serves a utility beyond its taste. It's not better. You're so, like, I'm, I don't want to pop your bubble. If you took a brain in a jar and then you were like, hey, these foods have the exact same macronutrient profile which one lights up more good neurons the pepsi would light up more good neurons it's designed to taste like like food that a bee would eat it's just pure syrup it's it's the dream i freaking love science look don't quote me on that one um what if the brain was jacked? That's why I said you got to take the body away, okay? But I, a protein shake is superior because it serves a purpose. I would keep it stocked in the fridge. Um, I still have a bunch of protein powder from when I was working out. Is that, does that ever go bad? Are there going to be like weird worms in there? When I started taking protein powder in high school, my parents were like, you got to eat it super quick because otherwise there will be worms in there. And I was like, okay. I'll just throw them in the trash compactor without even opening the lid. That's okay. Anyway. No. Yes. Root beer. 
I think root beer is actually, like, in terms of the broad soda categories, root beer is the best. It's superior. It is the... If I was to drink a non-diet soda at a restaurant, it would probably be a root beer. Hits different out of a glass bottle. Just tastes nice. I don't know what the flavor is. I guess it's mostly, it's like vanilla. It's not root, let's be honest. <laughs> I, they want you to think that they're putting, you know, like birch bark into a, into a decanter or something like that. It's, it's vanilla extract or something. Maybe like a little bit of cinnamon, but it's, it's delicious. You know, I, I, I would say root beer. I wouldn't keep it stocked because I would, might drink too much, but I'll say maybe at a restaurant. Also, I feel like a diet Coke tastes as good as a regular Coke to me. You may disagree and that's fine. But diet root beer is like something has gone wrong. They, they have not replicated the formula properly yet. I would rather have a water than a diet root beer. I would, I would occasionally make an allowance for a non-diet root beer. Maybe not a can of A&W, but a glass mug. Absolutely. Chocolate milkshake. Hmm. Um... You know, it's, here's the thing. Are there, there are other milkshakes coming? Okay, well, like, now that I know there's other milkshakes coming, I would put a chocolate milkshake in. I'll stick with water, please. That's just because I'm not the biggest fan of the chocolate flavor. Now, a strawberry milkshake or a vanilla milkshake, I think I would probably have those at a children's softball game. I'm more of a, I, I don't, I just, the chocolate flavor doesn't appeal to me all that much. But I, I'm not anti-milkshake. I am, like, fairly anti-milk. I mean, I, if, if I'm looking at the rest of this list, I think this is where the bulk of the argument is going to be. <laughs> you already know it's going in the all stick with water, thanks. I just don't get it. I, like... I, I just don't understand it. If you like milk because it tastes good, then that's fine. I don't have a quarrel with you. It's only that my main issue is when people are like, I drink it because it's like a superfood. And I'm like, it's really not at all. Like it has a, it has a lot of calcium in it. When was the last time you ever, like, turned on the news and they were like, the nation's been overcome by calcium deficiency? You get it out of, like, your diet ambiently. You don't need to supercharge. It's the same as eating, like, 10 oranges because you're worried about your vitamin C. Why don't you just, like, eat, uh, I don't even know, like, a spoonful of tomato sauce over the course of 24 hours? Did people say it's got 10 grams of protein per cup? That's like, it's a lot, but it reminds me of like when people say like, oh, I eat a lot of nuts because they have a lot of protein. They do have some protein, but like if you care about your protein intake and you're trying to amp it up, you're going to have to eat like 2,000 calories of peanuts in order to eat the equivalent amount of protein as like one salmon filet or like a little chicken breast or something like that. So like... I, and, and it's not even vegan, so it's not like a, it's a meat alternative, I guess, but only for people that are like, I don't like meat, but I still drink a cow's breast milk. If you like the taste, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that, okay? It's only the false argument that it's a good food. Like, it's good for you, I should say. I'm on doctor's orders to drink whole milk. Okay, well, like, you might be the exception that proves the rule. This is not, like, a beverage. It's a medicine. Also, I do have to ask, and I mean this with no disrespect. Do you live in Wisconsin? Your doctor prescribed milk to you. Does your doctor work in, like, a garage in their home that they converted into an office? It just seems, I, I, I don't know if I could imagine going to the doctor and getting a prescription for whole milk. It 
If you break a bone, no, if you break a bone, you go to the hospital, you get a cast. They don't just say drink two glasses of milk a day. That's not science, that's pseudoscience. That's some Dr. Oz shit. That's crazy. I've never seen chat move this fast. Just pour some milk on it. You know, it's, it's like a fucked up false dilemma, right? Like, people are always like, how many bones have you broken? None. You know what? Probably like 85% of people in my generation grew up drinking milk. They were breaking their bones left, right, and center. I'm not saying that the milk makes your bones more brittle. Just that, you know, the odds of you breaking a bone are substantially more heavily correlated to your lifestyle choices than the amount of milk that you drink. I had a friend in middle school, he broke his arm, drank milk every morning. You know how he broke his arm? He got mad that he lost the game in StarCraft and smashed his forearm on his desk chair. Just shattered his forearm bone. I don't even know what that one's called. Oh, if only he drank six glasses of milk a day, maybe the chair would have broke. That doesn't make any sense. You just, you get enough calcium from other sources, unless you get a prescription from a veterinarian. I don't know whether it was the ulna or the radius, okay? I just know the sound it made when he, I wasn't there, but I can imagine. Anyway, so there's, I would much rather have water than milk. Also, I don't like the taste. It's more like beyond, it, the conceptual problem that I have with the with milk is one thing, but then I also don't like the taste. So, and then it's also everywhere. It's permeated the beverage industry. They use it as a base in so many things. There's milkshakes, flavored milks. They use milk as a base for a, a protein shake. Then also, oh, you can't have cereal anymore without milk. Like it's just it's 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 got its little tendrils all archive eighty one in like the whole the whole food industry. So I'm not, I'm not a milk guy. That's, that's my take on it. Also, they make the milk cartons for that kids drink in school. I think this is where things started for me. This is where my milk hatred started. Um, they're too hard to open. And then when you open them, sometimes like they get way too much paper on the lip side and then it's way too thin on the far side and then you drink it and the cardboard gets like soggy and then some milk starts and you're like almost eating paper every time you're drinking the milk. It's like, we got to move past that, man. A milk, a little milk carton is not an ideal way to consume any beverage. Anyway, lemonade. Lemonade, it has a high variance um, between the good lemonades and the bad lemonades. But all, all in all, I think lemonade is like pretty good. If you made a pitcher of lemonade, or if I was, sometimes I'll be at like a counter service deli type restaurant, and they'll have the little, you know, like the plastic lemonade tubs that go... I would say once every 10 times, I would get a lemonade, especially if they added some, some stuff to it. If it's just lemonade, there's a chance. But if it's like, oh, you know, blueberry mint lemonade, I'm like, oh, man. I'll take a blueberry mint lemonade, please. So I, I would say that I got to elevate this to maybe at a restaurant. I also think that the, uh, the Starbucks lemonades are kind of good. I would never order one for myself, but when my wife, like I go to Starbucks and I'm like, do you want anything? And she's like, give me a green tea, passion, lemonade, black tea, Tazo. Uh, and I'm like, okay, okay, people, people, G, people, G, people, G, people, G, people, G, I got it. Um, I'll take a little sip. I'll take a little sip before I get home. That's, that's the husband tax. You could pay a DoorDash driver six bucks. I'll just, I'll do it for a sip. And every time I take a sip, I'm like, ooh, that's good. Eggnog. I think that I have had eggnog, but only like one glass in my life. And I, it has left like an indelible impression on my mind, which is that I don't think it's very good and I never want to drink it again. But I also don't feel like I can judge it because it was just such a small sample size 
but I will probably never touch it again. So I, I feel like just to be fair to eggnog, I have to put it in like the haven't tried it tier. It's like if you blacked out on a roller coaster, you couldn't give a review of it. You would be like, I don't know, I blacked out. That's kind of what my feeling on eggnog is. To be a responsible surveyor, I will not answer the question. Orange soda? Probably would be, I don't, I don't drink it. Like, I probably haven't had one in like 10 years. It's probably the best of the fruit sodas. I would, I would elevate this to maybe at a children's softball game. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind, if you, if you put it up against any of the things here, 100% I would take an orange soda over it. And you might think that I'm putting on airs, but I'm being very sincere. Sometimes when you order from a restaurant or Uber Eats or DoorDash, it will uh, come with a free soda, a free Pepsi, a free Coke. It's, it, they put a little uh, sticker on the can that says, thanks for ordering from us. Enjoy this on the house. It always goes straight into the fridge, and I don't touch it. I don't want it, honestly. I would rather just have some water. If they included a free orange soda, I might crack the can and put it in a glass and, and drink some. I think I would, I would prefer it over anything that's down here. Milk tea. What is this? This is tea with milk in it. Tea and steamed milk in tea. Okay. I think I might be a little different than the average person watching this. I, I'm realizing as we go down the list, I thought I was like a normal person, but like I have some opinions that are probably not that common. Uh, maybe they exist in, in, a, in the minority of, of persons. I think every time I drink milk, uh, well, uh, coffee or tea with milk in it, I'm always like, this shit tastes putrid. Like it tastes sour. Like something's gone wrong. I don't know if it's that the, like milk in a cold beverage, I feel like it, it can kind of hit different. One out of every three times you order a black iced coffee from McDonald's, they'll just ignore the fact that you wanted it, no sweetener, no milk, and they'll make you the standard that they make for the people that come through the drive-thru every morning at 6.30 a.m. before work. It'll be like a 64-ounce light tan coffee. I'm like, you know, I, iced coffee? I'm like, you know what? That's not so bad. I can live with it. If I ever get a hot tea or a hot coffee with milk in it, I'm like, this doesn't taste right. This, the milk has gone wrong. I don't know if it's the heat that made it go wrong or, or what, but it just doesn't feel right. So I, I would much rather stick with water than have a milk tea, without a doubt. And similar, it, it kind of applies to a latte. I'm lucky I've never been in this situation, okay? Because... Any place that has a latte is also just going to have coffee. Let me, by the way, this is, let's have some actionable information that might actually like elevate your life. There may come a time, you might be a coffee person. I just want drip coffee, okay? I just want a black coffee. You may go at some point, maybe you're on vacation, maybe you're in a new city. You're going to go to a hipster coffee shop. You're going to look at what they have on the menu and you're going to say they don't have coffee here. If you ever go to a coffee shop and you don't just see coffee, just order an Americano. It's coffee. It's just like you pay an extra dollar for tax. It's an espresso with water. That's a coffee. It's essentially like a drip coffee that they worked a little bit harder to make. I just don't want you to end up there and be like, I want a coffee, but I don't know what they have. So you're like, oh, I'll take a, a Frappuccino. And all of a sudden you end up with like a pink milkshake. Okay. This is, I'm, th you might pay an extra dollar for the coffee or something like that, but at least you'll be able to get your morning started. You'll be okay. Barista can confirm. <laughs> this guy's spitting. Yeah, Americana, it's just like a normal, you'll be okay. All right. A latte though, I would rather have a normal coffee i would rather have an americano or a drip coffee than a latte but they already have 
the coffee if they're making a latte. So, like, I don't necessarily dislike a latte, although it does taste a little sour to me. It's This is tough. I, I'm honestly, maybe at a children's softball game. I don't know what kind of concession stand they got. That's got chamomile tea, orange Fanta, and lattes, but he's doing damage control. No, I would drink a latte. Like, if Kate came back from the concession stand and she had a latte, she was like, oh, they, they made you a latte instead of coffee. I would be like, oh, that's fine. I'll drink it and have a good time. If she came back with a glass of grape juice and she's like, they didn't have coffee, so I got you grape juice, I would be like, it's the thought that counts. I would take like one sip politely. I would then place the cup under the bleacher. And then when we had to leave the game, I would run like a, a misdirection campaign. I would be like, wow, what a good game. Hey, do you think we can squeeze in over there? I'm just really like, I'd, I'd like to get back to the car. I got to go to the bathroom. And then like maybe in her head, she would be like, did he finish that grape juice? I'm like, I'm, oh, sorry. No, I forgot it, but that's okay. Like, grape juice is so bad, it would make me litter a little bit to save face. The perfect crime. Tea. Okay, tea? I don't like it as much as coffee, but just in a general sense, like, this is, we're talking, this is, looks like a standard black tea to me. Maybe it's an Earl Grey, maybe it's an orange uh, Pico. I would keep it in the fridge, for sure. I mean, it's not where you would keep it. You would keep it, you know, in a cupboard somewhere. But yeah. I don't drink it daily. Like for me, it's a situational thing. If my throat's feeling a little bit <clears throat> and I want like a, an uncaffeinated, I know you can get caffeinated tea, but you know, like, I guess this is where I'm at. Like, again, anything that's above restaurant tier serves a purpose for me. Tea is like my, I think my throat is a little hurty. So I'm going to drink like an uncaffeinated herbal tea and, uh, you know, just savor it while I watch an episode of The Righteous Gemstones on demand. So I, I wouldn't put it quite in uh, would drink daily, but I, I, we keep it around for sure. Banana milk? Um, I have had it. And I kind of like it. In spite of everything I've said to this point, artificial banana flavor is kind of goaded. It's like, you know that the artificial flavor is good because they use it in children's antibiotics. And even though it's used in the antibiotics, it never ruined it for me. I, I probably had like one ear infection every four months as a little kid. I took a lot of amoxicillin that tasted like banana. And even still, I go to my grandma's house and get like the, the banana candies which I don't even know if they're banana candies. I found out later in the U.S. I think they're called circus peanuts. But they, they taste like bananas anyway. They've got a certain, like, you know, ketone aura to them. Let's put it that way. I'm a, I'm a fan of, uh, of the artificial banana flavor. It is milk, but you know what? I might, I mean, if I went to a store and they were like, you can have a glass of water or we have banana milk. I might take the banana milk just, just out of curiosity. I think I would give it a try. This is like a, like this is daily. This is weekly. This is like quarterly. This is annually. <laughs> and this is almost never like once a decade maybe. Um... And I think that's fair. I think I would drink a banana milk once a year. Certified drunk high. This man has lost his mind. I think about this stuff. Most people just ambiently wander through life in a daze of consumption. Oh, this is good. Sweet. Mm, every movie they see. I think this is the best movie I've ever seen. I think this is the best movie I've ever seen. I'm constantly turning the gears in there. I'm. Why do I like this? Should I like this? What purpose does it serve? Does it just taste good uh, because it's hitting like an animal part of my brain? Or does it taste good because it's hitting a, an executive function level in my brain? I compare and contrast 
I look at them across different continuums and gradients of criteria. That's why I'm the only one that has to do the tier list. That's to the God gives his hardest tasks to his strongest soldiers, okay? So yeah, you can say minus two all you want. But I'm the only one crunching the damn numbers. Bubble tea. This is the one that's going to give me probably like in more trouble than the milk. I interface with bubble tea regularly. I'm a nice guy, okay? Like my wife loves bubble tea. Sometimes I'll be like, hey, do you want me to go pick up some lunch? She'll say sure. After I pick up the lunch, I'll swing by the bubble tea place and I'll get her her ideal bubble tea order. Most other places I would go, I would get something for myself. I've had bubble tea. I take a sip every now and then. Mostly because every single cup is like 800 milliliters. I'm like, I might as well. But I just don't get it. I've had the slushes. I've had the fruit teas. I've had the milk teas. I've had the tapioca pearls. I've had the... The, the grass jelly. I, I've had it all, man. And like, I think it tastes pretty okay. But the fact that it has like taken over, not taken over is maybe not the right word. The fact that it has now occupied such like a, a large space of the beverage niche for me is very surprising. Like every time... I go to a bubble tea place. So I'm like, this place is insanely busy and they're just selling like a drink. It's just, you know, it's just a drink. I mean, you would never like go to a store that was just like, we sell Pepsi, but bubble tea, people are getting dressed to the nines. And they're like, yeah, can I get 70% sugar, 20% ice? Can you add in the little green cubes? Do you have oat milk for that, uh, for that bubble tea? Okay, I'll take a little oat milk in that. Like, it's 20% skill. It's just... I guess we, we, I have to acknowledge my own bias, which is that I think I lower my perception of bubble tea as a result of the fact that it seems so popular. Like, I think bubble tea tastes better than Pepsi. But there's never anybody in chat who's like, I'm so excited, me and my boyfriend are going to go out for Pepsi later. But there's a lot of people who are... Anytime any streamer is like, oh, maybe I should get boba tea. Chat is just like, Craig as in boba. Boba's so good. I love boba. Boba! Like, people lose their minds over it, man. I'm like, it's pretty good. I guess it just, for whatever reason, it just kind of, like, misses me. Kaka, kaka boba? Mmm, shabulba, kaka boga. Anyway, who hurt you? Nobody hurt me. I'm just, like, one of those things where, like, when I... I'm not... I'm... If, if my wife was like, hey, can you go to the pizza place and get me two pieces of pepperoni pizza you know i'm getting three or four and i'm gonna eat two myself in the car before i drive home because pizza is that delicious when i go to the bubble tea emporium i'm not even tempted i'm like okay give me like a winter melon black tea with tapioca pearls please I don't, wow, <laughs> I've refreshed, I, well, G5 should not be refreshed, man, I'm just glad it kept my position, maybe your wife's order is just bad, it's not bad, it's good, this, yeah, there's G keys on the Logitech, G5 is also the Grob defense, her order is not bad. Her order is good. It tastes good. I've, and I've, she's gone through 
mango, bubble tea, winter melon, peach, watermelon slush, watermelon slush, Harry Styles voice, watermelon slush. I've gone through all of them, man. I get it. It's like swanky juice. But I, I'm kind of like, I'm being honest. And you will not, many people will think I'm being, I'm putting on artifice here. I would rather have a glass of water than a bubble tea. I'm not convinced that the bubble tea tastes better than water. I think it tastes good. Whether or not it tastes better than water, which also tastes good, I don't know. But it's also like, it's really bad for you, I think. I think that there's the perception that it's not that bad for you. But I think that's largely because people who drink bubble tea regularly are also just having that for lunch and not eating breakfast and then also not eating anything else until dinner. I think this is people this is a lunch drink. It's a meal replacement. You caught me. If you like it that's fine. I'm married to someone who loves bubble tea. Now, if she was a milk psycho, if she was drinking like eight glasses of milk and she kept sending me out to the dairy, I would be like, we got problems here. But the bubble tea, I'm happy to, I always feel cool when I'm in the store. Like maybe they think I'm, I'm getting a bubble tea for myself. Whoa, a middle-aged white guy getting a winter melon bubble tea? Whoa, he must be so worldly. But nah, they're probably, they, they probably got their finger on the pulse. They're, got, they're like, this guy's getting this for his wife 100%. <laughs> without a doubt but they might so someone who's new a new staff member might be like look at this cool worldly guy at least i get like some kind of street cred out of it <clears throat> vanilla milkshake look let's be honest okay it's it's up here like i mean it's I'd probably move that monster down maybe move milk tea like way up but <laughs> it's up there it's not at the very bottom like, i'm not drinking a glass of milk for for anybody man um vanilla milkshake i would get a vanilla milkshake at a restaurant it's tough i i do i like vanilla flavor we don't need to go down this again but it, i do hate that they're only giving vanilla strawberry and chocolate of the three, I don't know whether I would rather have strawberry or vanilla, but they're like both kind of in there. But usually there's like, they go a little harder on the flavors, you know? If you're at a place that has a milkshake that like isn't McDonald's now, usually there's like, oh, a Reese's peanut butter cup or something like that milkshake. Or there's like, a, you know, I guess I'm just thinking of like Dairy Queen blizzards now, but like... Yeah, root beer float or something like that. Like, I I think, to be honest, I would put both of these in, like, maybe at a restaurant. But I can tell you the last time I consumed a milkshake. I think it was when I was at an XCOM 2 preview event in San Francisco in, like, 2015. And... David was like, hey, we got to go to this cool burger place. It's called Burgermeister or something like that. The burgers are insane and the milkshakes are great too. And then we went there and I was like, I'll have a milkshake. And it was good. But I was like, I don't need to have another one for seven years. And here we are. Like, I understand that a, a milkshake probably has... Four to five times as many calories as a Pepsi. But like, I, I'll go ahead and be honest with you. I think it tastes four to five times better. I don't think that this makes me cognitively dissonant at all. So true. I mean, like a lot of... A, a vanilla milkshake probably has triple the calories of a bubble tea. It tastes 10 times better. Not that get, nothing against the bubble tea, but a milkshake is like... It's one of the best tasting beverages. It's just ice cream, more or less. Just like thin ice cream you consume with a straw. Malv, do you still hear? You remember our high school used to have like once a month Reed's Dairy Day? That was like the closest I think our school ever got to a riot. 
It was when the truck pulled in with all the milkshakes. You had to order a week in advance. Don't even get me started if they go. They were like, oh, 70 people ordered an orange, but we've only got like 45 oranges. Oh, man. Hold on. There's somebody at the door here. I don't know. If you're a delivery person. Oh, my God. Oh, one second, please. <laughs> I've got to answer a question. I've got, I've got to announce or uh, sign for my wife's package. One moment, please. No, you didn't, Malf. You did not dip your balls in my milkshake. And then I still drank it. Come on. UPS is so funny, man. Like, I'm not knocking the UPS driver, okay? I also didn't realize how thin my window was. Because I was shouting and laughing with chat. And then I, I just heard through the window, I need your name, please. And I was like, oh, shit, they can hear that every time. I've been talking shit every time I get a delivery for like two years. <laughs> I'll be like, look at this guy. Look at this guy dropping off. Why do we get so many packages? This shit is so annoying. But um, UPS is so funny. Like he was so mad when I opened the door. He was like, I actually need a name. So I said, Kate. And he said, no, I need your name. So I said, Ryan, but like, what are you going to do with that information? It's like, if you were dropping off the package at like a, at the wrong place, it's not like the, I need a name defense is going to stop them from stealing it. Like if this package was, I didn't even check the shipping label, to be honest. I don't know if it's my package. He just said, I need a name. I gave him a name. Then he said, that one doesn't work. And I said, how about this one? And he's like, okay, good enough. But like, what if, if this package is actually for somebody else, they're going to call in and be like, hey, what the heck? My package didn't arrive. They're going to be like, actually, we delivered it to Ryan. And they're going to be like, who the hell is that? And then he's going to be like, uh, Kate. And they're going to be like, I don't know who any of these people are. This is not a, a good way to stop packages from getting delivered to the wrong address. Anyway, hold on, I know we're still, we're taking a little tier list break. I'm always wondering the same, I have a DHL dude who delivers packages to my work. He asks my name every week and I'm like, what do you need it for? And we know each other for four years. I got, and again, I'm not knocking the delivery people, but I got people talked by a DHL driver like three months ago. I never order this stuff. This is all stuff my wife orders. And then the guy, like he comes to my door and is like, I tried to call you, but I couldn't call you. And we couldn't find your address. You don't need to write the instructions, though. I've been delivering to this place for a long time. Like, I know where it is. You don't need, like, when you write the instructions, it just makes me more confused. And I was, I was like, ah, 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 ah. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, man. I don't even know what's in the box. I just opened the door so you could, like, drop it inside. And he's going off on me for, like, conversations I was not privy to in the first place. Anyway, let's get back to the tier list. I hope the DHL guy's not outside, man. Hold on, let me check. No, we're good. Stream sniping me through the curtains. Heard you talking shit. I don't care. What are you going to do? Not deliver, like, boxes to my house? It would be like a real damper on my wife, but for me, it would actually be kind of like a lifestyle <laughs> improvement. I would have to take the recycling down a lot less often, man. That would, be, that would actually be like a bit of a dream come true. Don't threaten me with a good time. Okay. 
I love that they called Sprite lemon soda. Um, I know this is like a very uh, Gen Z take, but like, I don't want a can of Sprite, but McDonald's Sprite is actually good for you. Like, I think if you have plaque deposits, like, on your arteries or, like, in, you got something clogging up your intestines or your stomach or something like that, like, this will actually clear you out. I think your pipes will never be smoother and have a higher throughput than after drinking a large McDonald's Sprite. I would definitely drink this at a children's softball game. That's not even a question. Strawberry milk? There's way too much, like, milk representation on this, man. I don't, like, to be honest, I, it's right down here with the, with the chocolate milk and the, and the regular milk. Like, I understand that people like it. It's just not for me, okay? A milkshake, sure. But again, you know, people will be like, well, strawberry milk is not nearly as bad for you as a milkshake. Yeah, but I drink this shit, like, once every, like, presidential administration. People will be drinking, like, two of these a day. Iced tea, actually one of the goaded beverages. And it applies in to all iced teas except brisk. And probably nest tea cool. I love uh like an actual like a, a tea that has just been brewed and then allowed to chill in the fridge. Very refreshing on a summer day. I love a, a cold oyocha, you know? Get it out of a vending machine. Drink it while the, the hot Osaka sun beats down on you. Pretend you're living in a Caro Caro Bonito album. I also like an Arizona iced tea. I like a, I, I like a sweet iced tea as well. I'm, I'm all for the iced teas. Mod Pizza has, has a great iced tea. I'm a big fan of the iced teas in general. Now... This one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little sauce on this one. I'm going to add like a tilt factor, okay? I would keep in the fridge, but I would like to add in parentheses, seasonal. I would keep in the fridge seasonal. In the summertime, I would love to have a pitcher of iced tea in the fridge at all times and have a, a glass or two daily. Green tea, same situation. Would keep in the house, essentially. Soup is weird. Like, not the, the soup being on the list is weird. Soup, in general, is extremely normal. It's not really a beverage. And also, like, maybe I'm putting a little haute cuisine on this. I don't keep soup in the house. Like, this soup is, like, one of the rare things in life that I'm mouth-pilled on. Rather than having, like, a can of Campbell's soup, I would rather just buy some vegetables and then make a soup it doesn't take that much more time it tastes better it's better for you so like i don't know how to describe this like would, would i keep it in my fridge kind of i guess would i drink it daily no absolutely not that's insanity i do still think that there and everybody will laugh at me for this i do still think that there is, a, with the rise of bone broth, I think that there is a place for a savory type bubble tea restaurant that sells. We're going to have to work on the marketing because nobody's going to be finding this phrase too appetizing. But like a, a bubble tea restaurant that sells like bone broth slurries. You know, like some bone broth, some cubed vegetables, herbs and spices. I would actually, like, like, br broth is not that different from tea. I don't find it, like, if someone was outside and they had, like, a travel mug full of tea, I would be like, that's insanely normal. Let me guess, you got a long scarf on. If someone was like, I've got a travel mug and it's full of, like, it's just, like, piping hot chicken broth with some, like, carrots and celery in it, I would be like, that shit's kind of cool. That sounds like a great idea. 
Yeah, like Bovril. I don't know how it's pronounced, but you know, like a like a gravy tea. <laughs> My grandma does that. Yeah, that's kind of sick, man. I'm into it. I think I think there's a place for for this this savory bubble tea to to come around. I would rather have 350 milliliters of chicken broth than almost any hot beverage. Goalies at the last Winter Classic had their water bottles full of broth. Many people are saying this. Many people are saying, we're coming around to it. You are an alien. <laughs> I don't know, this one's kind of hard to parse. I mean, I would keep soup in my fridge. I would not describe it as a beverage necessarily, but oh my God, you won't believe this. There's nobody there. I don't know who, that was probably Amazon. You know what? Because like uh, DHL, UPS, FedEx, they have to like, you know, there's some compliance things that they have to do. Hey, what's your name? You know, will you sign for this, et cetera, et cetera? Amazon is just like, yeet. I got a blue envelope here with your address on it. I, I got to make 1,700 deliveries before two today. I don't have time to be going through this knock on the door, wait for somebody to open it, shit. And I respect that. Not maybe the labor practices that led to it, but I'm like, I'm happy that it's so expedited. I would rather, like, 1% of my packages get stolen, then have to open the door for every delivery. That's insane. People are working from home these days. It's, it's the endless pandemic. Can't be stepping out of Zoom calls to open like a, a Gundam action figure that you got from Play Asia like three months ago. Anyway, <clears throat> sparkling water. Easy. Uh, I would not drink it daily. The reason I won't drink it daily is just because it's, and I'm willing to say it, okay? It's inferior water. It tastes better sometimes. And I like, I probably like sparkling water more than you do if you're being a hater right now. It tastes better sometimes. Sometimes it just tastes different. But regular water, insanely cheap. It's the cheapest beverage you could buy. Your daily water consumption out of the tap probably costs you like 15 cents if, if you're going hard. Like Justin's daily water consumption is probably like 15 cents. 12 pack of sparkling water. 550, 549, maybe six bucks. And then you got 12 cans. And the cans are like, you know. It's not a huge deal, but it does fill up your recycling bin pretty fast. I don't have the self-control to just drink like one can a day. Like I'll drink three cans of sparkling water a day. And I, but I, I want to base myself with a two liter bottle. Because then, you know, a two liter bottle, if you don't finish that within 24 hours, you're basically just drinking like flat Sprite. So personally... I would put this in the keep in the fridge tier. And over the summer, I, I very much enjoy uh, a sparkling water. In the wintertime, I don't want to carry a 12-pack of bubbly home from the grocery store and then carry all the empty cans down to the recycling. And then, you know, it fills up your refrigerator. Space in the fr refrigerator is at a premium. I like it, but it's not an everyday thing for me. Tropical juice. I can't get a soda stream. They're, they got their fingers involved in the conflict in the West Bank. Read literature, chat. Tropical juice. I mean, I guess I could just buy a soda stream and never tell anybody. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's the secret. And then I could be like, people would be like, why is your water sparkling even though it's in a glass? And I would be like, oh, I just started to open the can and then pour it into a cup now. People would be like, he's old. That seems like something an old person would do. 
It's the perfect crime. I was using my soda stream yesterday. Your soda stream? Oh, I meant my air fryer. <laughs> People would believe that. Um, anyway. Tropical juice. I don't understand the juice supply chain. I'll start you there. But like... I feel like if pineapple juice, which is what I'm going to say tropical juice is, if pineapple juice was so good, you would see it more often. Like, I think that there's a reason that, like, the orange juice section at the grocery store is, like, four shelves, and then the pineapple juice is, like, one row. Maybe that's an appeal to consensus, but don't say that, Brezzo. <laughs> I'm not repeating that. Ever tell you about the time? Um, so my uh, in in university, I lived in a house. There's two houses. This was the second house with uh, five other people, and then also it was basically six people because one of my friend's girlfriend basically lived with us, even though she never chipped in on anything. <laughs> anyway, so she was, she fancied herself a bit of a Carrie Bradshaw type. So she would have all sorts of like weird juices in our fridge for, you know, making cocktails. So she had a, there was pineapple juice in our fridge for like, I don't know, like three months. And I would always open the fridge, look at the pineapple juice and be like a little tempted. Like, oh, I wonder what pineapple juice tastes like. I resisted out of respect. One morning I woke up. I was so hungover, like just disgustingly hungover, I would drink any liquid that was available. In a moment of weakness, I saw the pineapple juice. I was like, it's citrus, it's sugar, it's got everything the body needs. I just, there, I took, picked up the carton, there was only like a couple of swigs left in the carton, tipped it up, took a swallow, and was like, that doesn't seem right. Spat it out in the kitchen sink, and it was black. And I remember there being a moment where I was like, I don't think pineapple juice is like supposed to be black. And then I realized like, oh, this is like old as hell. And then I poured the rest into the sink and, and drank like a lot of water. <laughs> but I have had pineapple juice since then. That's probably the one mouth dipped his balls into. I would puke. I This sounds ridiculous, but I think I was too hungover to throw up. I think my body was like, I'm not ready to, to purge anything yet. We're holding on to like every source of mineral and moisture that we can have. If it had been like a couple of hours into the recovery, I think I would have yacked for sure. Anyway, tropical juice, I don't know. Maybe at a children's softball game. Grape soda? All grape-flavored things are bad. That's my hypothesis, and I'm sticking to it. We got to get some progress. None of these next, like, half dozen inspire me at all, okay? Ginger tea. I'm going to put this right next to the chamomile. Maybe above the chamomile. Artificial grape flavor is good. Artificial grape flavor is ass. A grape soda is fucking gross. I'm sorry to say. I, I don't want to be the arbiter of what's acceptable and what's not, okay? But like if you went with a, to a, a restaurant with another grown-up, okay? Let's, let's call it a sit-down restaurant. If they ordered a cocktail a wine, a beer, water, sparkling water, Coke, Diet Coke. You're like, you're a normal person. You're in touch with the culture, okay? If they said, do you have grape juice or apple juice or a grape soda? I like apple juice, though, not the other ones. You would be like, something's not, like this person was homeschooled. That would, and I'm not even passing judgment there. If I was like at a, like a, I don't know, like a corporate dinner or something like that. And then the person that I was with was like, I'll have a grape soda. I would be like, you were homeschooled a hundred percent. 
There's no 30, 40 year olds out there that are like, I'm so excited to go out of the house so I can have a grape soda. Tell me more about your relationship with grape soda. Because it was like, were you not allowed to have it as a kid? And then you grew up thinking that it was like the holy grail of drinks. So as an adult, you're like, I, anytime I get the chance to take a grape soda, I don't pass up on it. Grape juice is also, I mean, grape juice is like almost more psychotic. But I, we don't need to go into that. We already kind of went off on grape juice. It's not baby, it tastes nothing like wine. So many people are saying it's just good, like tasty wine. They taste nothing alike. It's like saying like a, a slice of bread and a beer tastes the same. There's similar ingredient composition, but something in the process drastically changed between the two. They do not taste the same. You're, you've lost your mind. If I gave you a beer and then a slice of bread, you, so you're like, oh, these taste pretty similar. That would be your, your response. This glass of liquid and this dry square, they don't, you have lost your mind. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's because I predominantly drink IPAs. So it's possible that um, you might be ale-pilled. I can't speak to that. That's your own personal journey. Depends on the bread. Yeah, oh, I mean, you got to remember, I live in North America. I think it's possible that if you live in, um, you know, the Baltics, there might be like a conveyor belt with a bunch of like, you know, barley on it. And then some of it goes to the Kanakabrod factory and some of it goes to the, the Viking beer factory. We don't do that here. We got like, there's entire American states that basically just dump all of their agricultural yield into the Wonder Bread factory. And then in Canada, probably like, I'd say 25% of the arable land in Manitoba is probably owned by Dempsters. So anyway, we don't need to go into that. Fruit punch. I have never consumed this as an adult, but I think it's kind of delicious. As a child, this would be one of my preferred beverages for sure. I think I would drink this at a children's softball game, but there's a, an, a, a caveat here. I need to know what it tastes like as an adult because my palate has changed. Coffee with cream and sugar is definitely better than milk tea. I would also say I would not, I, maybe like two times a year, I would have, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be more honest with you. I think this should, this should be up a tier and maybe at a restaurant because if I go out to like, um, like a, a Turkish restaurant or you know, uh, like a Lebanese restaurant. I'll get a Turkish coffee for sure. It's delicious. Little, little sugar, little rose water. I guess it's not cream, but I'm just basically treating this as a sweet coffee. I would, I, I would consume this once every three to six months is my guess. Cappuccino. I don't know if I've ever had a cappuccino in my life. What's what's the chino and what's the kappa? It's coffee. And it's it's a latte with more foam. So it's espresso, milk and foam. Now I've never had one. But Conceptually to me, that sounds worse than a latte. I don't want to lose 14% espresso. The milk I could take or leave, but I don't want to lose 14% espresso to add a little bit more foam. I'm going to chalk this up as the I'll stick with water, thanks. I would also like to acknowledge that I think this is entirely branding, but in my head, Sprite tastes delicious and 7-Up tastes like pure ass. 
All right, fine. I'll, I've never tried it. I guess I'll put it in the haven't tried it tier. I, on a logical intellectual level, I don't think that they taste much different. But if I remove my scientist brain and I get in touch with my personal delusional overconfident animal brain, I'm like, Sprite is good and 7-Up is bad. I would stick with the water, thanks, over a 7-Up. And I think this is also branding, but I would rather have a Coke than a Pepsi, but I would still stick with the water. But a Diet Coke, I would definitely have at a restaurant. A Coke Zero, if a Coke Zero was on the list, I would elevate it slightly above the Diet Coke tier. But I will say, I don't keep it in the fridge. I don't think I bought a soda at a grocery store since before the year 2010, since before the previous decade. I just don't, I, I guess I just don't see the point. I know we, we talked, it was like an hour ago when we talked about it. But it's like, if you're going to drink something that tastes kind of good, but like not that good, and also is calorie rich, like, why don't you just drink like a beer? Not eight beers, but you shouldn't be drinking eight sodas either. But if you're going to drink like one beverage for fun a day, <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not a, an oncologist, okay? I'm not a cardiologist. I'm not a scientist. I'm just saying, if you're going to deliberately drink one bad thing that's bad for you daily as a treat, why not just have a beer? You could have some fun with it. I do, I'll be honest with you. I do think that a beer is probably worse for you than a Coke. And I think that a lot of people wouldn't say that. Like alcohol is essentially toxic. You know, it's, it's poison. Much, I have to acknowledge again my own biases. Much like the milk lobby, the alcohol lobby is pumping millions and millions of dollars probably a day into trying to uh, push this idea that like, oh, one glass of wine is actually like good for you. And then the glass is like, you know, two liters. I don't think that's true. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not, you know, consulting any data for this, but that doesn't seem right at all. It seems like it's absolutely worse for you. But also... So it's a lot more fun. <laughs> like one beer a day, I think, would do more for your spirit than one Coke a day. As long as you keep it at a reasonable level. But that's true for the soda as well. You shouldn't, look, obviously you shouldn't be drinking six beers a day. You also shouldn't be drinking six Cokes a day. You shouldn't be drinking six Diet Cokes a day. Six waters is pretty good. I think you could probably be okay with that. What about six coffees? I don't know. I would have to consult the Food and Drug Administration on that. 50 milliliters of red wine a day is good. I would honest, source a study commissioned by... Quick, think of a winery. Wolf Blass. And a little bit of secondhand smoke is, is actually stimulating because it helps your lungs uh, get a little exercise. They get, they get experience at pushing all the tar out of them, which actually is good for their health, according to Philip Morris. Anyway, I'm not saying you should drink more beer, but I, I, I guess it's what it's like. I just don't see the point of a soda. I guess it tastes good. But like when you, when people are like, I drink like, you know, eight diet ginger ales a day. I'm like, you got to knock that the fuck off. That's insanity. You've lost your mind. Eight diet ginger ales a day. 
You got to taper, man. They throw in like a glass of water every other ginger ale or something. What are you, uh, do you work at the recycling plant? Like if you worked at a place where you could just crush a can and throw it into the recycling depot, I would respect that. But I mean, some of us have got to leave that shit out on the curb. I don't want people to see 60 cans of diet ginger ale in there. Come to my house on Halloween with the, you know, eggs in hand. Okay. Wine. I personally am not that wine pilt, but I think that I have to at least operate as the wine defender for Twitch chat. Because you cannot bring up wine on the internet in certain demographics without having people be convinced that it's just either a scam or like a $2 wine on average is as good as like a $70 wine. Or that um, I saw an episode of Mythbusters where they filtered a bunch of Costco wine and then it was uh, as good as the best wine in the world. Look, why is like, it, it, this is like the only beverage that people actually give this same level of scrutiny to, okay? It's just like, not the, the average wine consumer is not buying the most expensive wine on the planet. You're literally like, you're doing what I do. You're making up like a rich guy who probably voted for the person that you didn't vote for. And then you're like, that motherfucker loves wine. But guess what? It's not that good. It, this, the average person that drinks wine, they're buying like the third cheapest bottle in the store. And then they're splitting it with their spouse over dinner. They also have a baguette, probably some pasta upper middle class, they've got a microplane uh, Parmigiano Reggiano on top of the pasta, okay? That's just a normal human experience, okay? This, I, I, we don't keep it, well, here's the thing, here's how safe wine is in our house. We bought a bottle of wine to celebrate New Year's 2020. Uh, it's still, I can literally see it from where I'm sitting. Yeah, so it's like over two years old. We didn't feel like cracking it on New Year's night. We were just like, ah, I think we're okay. It's just sitting there. Like the Christmas tree? We don't put up a Christmas tree. That's insanity. Crack it now. Do a giveaway in chat. I'm not worried about it going bad. I just don't want to drink it. Like, uh... You know, we we didn't crack it on New Year's. There's kind of, It's like if you don't have New Year's wine, and you're not going to have that on like January 3rd. It's not even like a special day. Then like very soon after that, we found out Kay was pregnant. So we're like, well, obviously I'm not going to like drink a bottle of wine on my own while my wife is pregnant. That's like some psychotic behavior. Then we had the baby and there's like, there wasn't a lot of opportunity. To, it's just like the... It doesn't speak to me. It doesn't, it doesn't call me like, uh, like Frodo, you know, or the ring speaks to Gollum. Like it's sitting there and I'm like, whatever, it can sit there for another 10 years. I don't care. A time will come. We'll have another couple over to our house when the pandemic is done. And then we'll be like, check this out. And it'll be a funny story anyway. But you know, yeah, maybe at a restaurant. Occasionally. If we've Ubered to a restaurant, I would, I would drink some, some wine with my wife. Uh, but we don't really keep it in the house. Now, beer, it calls to me like Gollum calls to the ring. I certainly would not put it in the wood drink daily tier, but I definitely would keep it in the fridge. Now, this has no appeal to me whatsoever. Like this frosted mug with a little bit of... Uh, I mean, let's just be honest, it's got a little bit of a cum shot draped over the side. That doesn't appeal to me. But I do enjoy an adult beverage from time to time. Now, we've had a nice moment where everybody's been relatively amenable recently. Let's get mad again. I think that orange juice is basically like the milk of the juice industry. And I've talked about this at length in the past. Uh... It is not a health food. Much like milk, marketing has been pumping a ton of influence 
financially and culturally into this idea that orange juice is actually good for you. It's not good for you. It's not the worst thing in the world that you could drink. But the idea that people think that, that drinking like a glass of this is like drinking a glass of concentrated sunshine in the morning, that's insanity. There is also, I want to say something about orange juice. Tropicana orange juice is not tasty. It's just orange vinegar. Something has gone wrong in the supply chain. The cardened orange juices that you get at the grocery store are not good. They don't taste like oranges. You got to eat an orange and then try to drink a glass of Tropicana orange juice. You would be like, what oranges are you using to make this? But a freshly squeezed orange juice while being like five times the price is actually fantastic. It's sweet. It's not as tart. It just has like a little citric acid sort of hit, but it's mostly like smooth and sweet. The Tropicana orange juice, I always feel like one mouthful of orange juice actually tastes like, it, it takes four swallows to get all the orange juice out of my mouth. Like the first one gets 90%, but then there's like 10% residue, and then I swallow again, and then there's like 5% residue, and, and so on and so forth. But I will say that I would consume orange juice at a restaurant. But I, unlike milk... I would order this like at a brunch or something like that if they press the juice themselves. I know that sounds like a hipster thing. I'll drink whatever. You got Tim Hortons coffee. You got Starbucks coffee. You got Nescafe. You got Folgers. I don't give a shit. I'll take a glass. You can be a hipster about some things and, and it's relevant and you can have no standards about others. But like, I'm not paying four bucks for a glass of Tropicana orange juice at a brunch place. That's, I would rather light my money on fire in front of you, in front of anybody, quite frankly. But if you're pressing it there, then I would pay more because it tastes good. But I'm not, I would rather pay like seven bucks for good orange juice than four bucks for a glass of like orange vegetable oil with a dash of balsamic vinegar in it. At brunch, I would, get, I would get this in some... If I had a coffee before I left the house. Pulp or no pulp? I don't care, as long as it tastes good. It's all good. Pear juice. I am, imagine I would like it, but we don't really drink that here. People hit me with the question marks. I don't buy Tropicana. As a result of not buying Tropicana, I don't have to interface with a pulp or no pulp dynamic. I don't I I buy no pulp and I buy no no pulp. Cuz the shit tastes like uh I mean I can't think of any more vinegars. Allen's? I think Allen's makes a vinegar. Red Bull. I'll just stick with the water, thanks, but I would put it over a monster. Oat milk. I keep it in the fridge. I mean, this is easy. I would like to place it here. Okay, that's fine. I'll just do that then. I would rather have an oat milk than an almond milk. But it's... I'm not picky. I would, I would take either and be... I would find that acceptable. They're both fine. Coconut milk is not a beverage. Coconut milk is something that you add to Southeast Asian cuisine in order to thicken and sweeten a curry. It's not a like a like a beverage you would consume for fun, I think. Coconut water, dude, I mean there's there's something to be said about coconut water. I kind of look at coconut water as like nature's Gatorade. Like if you are if you're thirsty, a coconut water will it it gets into your cells faster than any other beverage. It will take you from thirsty to not thirsty in like five seconds. But it tastes kind of like I imagine a bowl of sweat would taste. But sometimes I'll still get it. Because it serves a purpose. And the purpose is like rehydration. If you never had coconut water, you're, you're throwing out some question marks. Coconut water tastes a little sweaty. 
My dad always says it tastes like cum. That's a hilarious sentence. That is, you should be a streamer because that's funnier than anything I've ever said. That's very good. Why are you drinking sweat? Well, when you're thirsty, why are you thirsty? Because you sweated so much. So what should you drink? Sweat. Duh. When you're hungry, why are you hungry? Because you took a big dump. What should you eat? Big bowl of shit. I don't know. Why would you complicate things? It's people make their life so unnecessarily hard. Just whatever you shit out, eat in. <laughs> or take out. That's fine. I don't know. Like, I... I'll, I've consumed coconut milk. I don't feel comfortable putting it in a beverage tier, though. Because, like, I've never had, like a, like, a cup of coconut milk to consume. I think I might actually throw up if I did. And I think it, coconut milk tastes pretty good. But it's like drinking a cup of fish sauce or something like that. Like, that's an ingredient. That's not a food. Or not a, not a beverage, I should say. Soup, yes, but coconut milk, no. Yeah, but this is just because I'm trying to get my startup off the ground. It's a great ingredient. Don't get me. You think it's coconut water? Coconut water is it? It tastes like cum. It doesn't look like cum. Coconut water is like. It's like translucent. This shit is a. It's a bukaki carafe. Note this, uh, bukaki. Carafe. I could totally picture Bukaki Carafe being on like one of those posters for Coachella that announces all of the all of the bands. Be like Billy Eilish, Steve Aoki, Tiny Font, Bukaki Carafe. Be like, did you say Bukaki Carafe? Apple juice. Store-bought apple juice, substantially better than store-bought orange juice. I would much rather, if you have like a McCain juice fountain, snap, if, if it's got cranberry, apple, orange, snap, pick cranberry any day of the damn week. Second, with a bullet, apple. Third, orange. If they have grapefruit, I usually go for that first, but that's, you're going to judge me for that. I feel like a store-bought apple juice is, is like a C tier, which is pretty good relative to a lot of the other stuff on the list. But I also don't feel like... I mean, fresh apple juice is just apple cider, man. At least in my head. I don't think that's like literally the case, but I feel like apple juice, no matter what, is kind of like here. And then like Tropicana orange juice is like here, but fresh squeezed orange juice is like right here. So I think apple juice is pretty much always like at a children's softball game for me. I would take it over a water, you know, now and then. Soy milk. You can be a hater all you want. I would put it up here, but right there with them. Doesn't bother me at all. Not concerned in the slightest. Wrong, wrong, wrong. They all taste like, unless you're, if you're drinking a glass, I could understand. But like, if you're just adding it to something, it's all the same shit, man. Don't even get me started. I never consume soy. Okay. I bet, like, to be honest, if you put me against you in a strongman competition, I bet on me. There's probably some people in chat that would win. But on average, if you, if you took a sample of chat of people that were like, I never consume soy, I bet I'm stronger than you. And I'm just being honest. I understand not wanting to consume so much soy, but like a, the difference, between, you know, if you walked into like a Starbucks and you're like, I'll take a cappuccino with oat milk. And they're like, oh, we only have soy milk. Like you would walk out. I could pick you up over my head. That's just my personal opinion, is that I could pick you up over my head. 
I also think, and I don't even think this one, like you might be stronger than me. I would crush your ass on the Peloton without a doubt. That one is not even an option. I'll be pedaling like a 55-year-old when Brian Adams' run to you comes on. You're not going to touch the wattage, okay? You might think that you're strong because, you, you know, you like soldered your motherboard or something like that. Maybe. Maybe you think you're strong because you grew a beard. Maybe you think you're strong because you look strong and you wear shorts in the wintertime. I don't know. I'm willing to be wrong on that one, okay? I'm willing to step up to the Atlas Stones and see who can pick up the biggest one. And I'm willing to be wrong and shake your hand afterwards. On the Peloton, I would crush you. It wouldn't even be close. I just got here. This list sucks. Yeah, I love it. But this is true. This is me. This is my honest opinion about this stuff. Like, I would drink water and coffee daily. That's a given. I would keep alternative milks in my fridge. I would keep some protein powder on hand. Keep some tea, some iced tea, some tea, some soup, some sparkling water, and some beer on hand. Wouldn't drink them every day, but on a weekly basis, maybe. If the mood strikes me, a nice coffee, maybe a glass of wine, an apple cider in the autumnal season, a Gatorade after a hard day's work, a root beer because it's the best of the sodas, lemonade's just tasty, vanilla milkshake or strawberry milkshake if I'm trying to pretend it's 1950s America, a Diet Coke can hit the spot in a DoorDash order or an Uber Eats, and a fresh squeezed, a fresh squeezed orange juice. Not a store-bought cardoned orange juice shipped from Florida to the North American West Coast where they added a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Any other tea? Sure. Like, maybe at a children's softball game. You know, if the mood strikes... If I'm at my mom's house and she's like, do you want some tea? Now and then, I'd be like, sure. Orange soda, if the mood strikes. A latte, if there's no other option. Banana milk, you know what? It's the best of the milks, but let's, let's put it where it belongs. A, a, a McDonald's Sprite, the occasional tropical juice, and an apple juice out of a juice fountain once or twice a year if I'm at a hotel's continental breakfast. And then, things I don't want, weird sodas that look better than they taste, $9 600-calorie bubble tea that tastes okay, but I don't see the purpose. I only purchase this to curry favor with my spouse. All the milks, non-diet sodas that taste functionally equivalent to the diet sodas to me, energy drinks, Grape juice, the, the, anybody that drank this should, be, if you're an adult and you have this container of Welch's grape juice in your fridge, the NSA should be spying on you. You're up to some shit and it might not even be your fault. It might be due to your upbringing, but this is not a good sign. There is some causative correlation, I think, between adult grape juice consumers at least if you're, like, under the age of 60. Chocolate milkshake, it's just an inferior milkshake. Chocolate milk, we don't need to discuss this. Grape soda, almost worse than grape juice, I'm just not sure. And 7-Up. And then things I have not tried. All right, I'll throw a slash marker in here. That's okay, slash marker. That's a beverage tier list. That was like two hours long. <laughs> I think I got, I got it out though, man. I got my information out there. I got my reasons.